<clears throat> Yo, girls and guys, welcome back to Mike's Corner of Nostalgia. Hope you guys are doing good. Uh, just chilling. Had a pretty good day. Uh, still kind of do dealing with some more of those nostalgic emotions, backlash from having some new changes in my life. I guess. So I want to talk. I want to talk about that a little bit. I guess a lot of it is like you'll go through a time period where you don't feel nostalgic and you feel like really in the now and you feel like things are happening. And then sometimes you take a step back when something changes or something's about to change and you can sense it or you can it's not even about sensing it. You just know it's going to change. And then all of a sudden it's like out of nowhere you're hit with that nostalgic wave Like, for example, um, even though it's been a long, long time, uh, I'm going to be cleaning up my room a little bit and organizing s some of my closet. And just doing that, the act of doing that, seeing some of those objects from my past in my closet is harder than you think it would be because... I have change going on right now where I'm about to start dating someone. And then on top of that, while this change is happening, of course, there's like weird, unlinked nostalgia. You know, nostalgia makes sense when somebody comes into your life from your past or something reminds you of them. But when seemingly there's like no link, it's, it can be frustrating because it feels like it feels like that past person is stealing your happiness now or it feels like life is not allowing you to change properly or enjoy your change in your life and it's also gonna slap you in the face with uh past sad nostalgia and past memories and it's almost like laughing in your face like ha 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 you aren't 20 anymore ha 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 you're not just fresh out of high school ha 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 it, it's it's frustrating it's not it's not my mind it's not i'm sure everyone's mind does it a little bit but it, but it's not my mind it's not just something wrong with me it's not just no, life actually does this to people, especially people who got attacked in relationships. For whatever reason, it's just part of life. It's part of being a human. doesn't matter how strong or positive your mind is. That has nothing to do with it. If you had any type of open heart and loved somebody and got hurt like that, it's just inevitable. And that should be most people, but unfortunately, I don't know what's going on here. You got these 19-year-old women who seem like young, innocent things, and they're just, like, the most darkest, way too far deep into dark romance. Like, they shouldn't be that deep until they're, like, 45 years old and they lived a shit life, but somehow they're that deep when they're 19 and their life has, has been just fine so far, so it doesn't make any sense. That's another reason why a lot of young people, men and women, go unguarded into these relationships and then come out fucking fucked up. Uh, anyways, that's a little bit about the nostalgia that's been kind of weighing down on me. Hopefully some of it starts to go away as I, as I date this girl and move on. That's kind of like my goal right now because I feel like if I get over if I can get over the the meat and potatoes of that nostalgia and that and those sad memories I feel like the world is my oyster at that point like that's the biggest thing stopping me honestly it stops me from doing extra work it stops me from making these videos longer and more it stops me from all types of things I know you could just be like, well, no, you're just a lazy person. Yeah, everyone's lazy. But I'm, I promise you, you don't know somebody hurt your enthusiasm for life until after the fact. 
a lot of times it'll happen and then even if that person was capable of helping you get back into your life that most of the time they ghost at that point i don't know people who ghost on good relationships are fucking weirdos i don't care if it's a friendship if it's a partnership or whatever it is if you try hard to ghost somebody who loved you or still loves you you're fucking scum it's like it's like naruto kakashi sensei's moral code anyone who anyone who abandons a friend or a lover is fucking scum and and that's a tough reality to deal with that somebody you thought was beautiful or somebody you thought had a great soul or somebody you thought was the love of your life could actually be scum it's it's not you know i'm not making trash talking human beings i'm not trash talking anything but people who are scum you know you're definitively objectively scum if you do those things it has nothing to do with other good things that you may have done in the past when it was easy to do good things no when it was when it was time to put up you fucking let yourself let your true colors shine you're a fucking scummy selfish piece of shit some of them are, like fucking know it and they kind of like it that's the weird part i gotta go grab water real quick i'll be back Start complaining your guys' ear off, and then we're talk a little bit about Final Fantasy and have some fun. Okay, now I'm back with water, and I'm also going to brush my teeth real quick, so I'm going to do it later when I'm tired as fuck.
Okay, guys and girls and girls and guys, I'm back. Got my Wawa. Where's my other water? Can't wait to open up this Final Fantasy. Okay, chat for a little bit, and then we'll talk a little bit about so far what we're doing here with Yuffie, and then I'll sign off, most likely. Unless it's one of those weird videos where I end up talking the whole time for some reason. Yeah, so... Some of the stuff I'm realizing, the more I get into the, the this period I'm going through right now, got my period, my menstruation cycle. Um, I think a lot of the resistance. And the unhappiness, the unsettling feeling, the feeling like you're stealing life away from itself, if that makes sense. Like when you're when you're when you're young and things are easy and you got your first couple of good relationships, things just feel natural. But then after you get hurt and you wanna have fun again in life and you wanna be happy again in life and you wanna have a romance and you wanna live and be successful and do good things for yourself and other people. Any of that shit that involved that embodies a good life. You start, you get this like resistance wall. It feels like you're, you have to steal the material. You have to steal any, it, it's like now you're, now you're to live. You're like a rat stealing happiness. Maybe you can rat around and get that, a girl to like you. Maybe you can rat around and get a boy to stick around. And it's just, Something that I was never prepared for at all. I don't think it's anything... I don't think it's something that anybody really wants to ever face. And that's why you got a lot of girls who kind of dominate the, the dating world. And then you got a lot of men from the age of 20 onwards who are like... De depressed or upset with the dating world entirely. And it's also probably leaked over into their... Happiness in life in general, honestly. And again, stemming back to the selfish gender. And guess what? People, I always, people always said, well, just keep getting older, man. Take care of yourself. And the older you get, men, men age like a fine wine. People said all this shit. And I was like, yeah, right, bro. But honestly, it's starting to seem true because it's like, I get a little bit older and it's like all of a sudden all these women who are aging with me, like it seems like the hotter ones are giving me attention now and the ones with brains who are actually cool are more open to a guy like me. I don't know what exactly stopped a lot of these. I don't know what goes through a woman's head from the age of 16 to 25, but it's some sinister bullshit. That's all I'm saying. Some sinister, creepy-ass bullshit inside a pretty little thing's head. I think that's the biggest problem is we have this not only this image of women being like goddesses or like having a very feminine, warm, inviting, happy exterior eyes attitude expression body but most of the time i th it just seems like they're harboring most of the evil of mankind is the problem <laughs> like not to be sexist or anything it's just true and then, and if we actually taught people that we could treat women better that's the thing i'm not being sexist it's just like i said it's just fucking true and if we taught our young men and women that we would act they would have a chance the women would have a chance to handle the massive evil sadness that is inside a woman that they start to face at that age, at the ripe young age of 17 ish and then you would have young men who would have an idea of what they're up against and 
Maybe they wouldn't get so depressed. Maybe they wouldn't get so angry because they had a chance, you know? It's a lot harder to get mad at something when people warn you about it, you know what I mean? But when you had no fucking warning and it was like the most despicable shit and it was the most abundant shit and it's literally in like 3.5 3. billion of the planet. Maybe more because it's in men too now. And I'm sure there was always darkness in both genders. I'm not saying that. I'm just talking about modern days. Um, That's a little bit about the stuff I've been thinking about. And why am I, why, you know, you might be like, why are you angry about this? Why are you, well, a lot of it comes down, I'm angry about it because I'm finally about to date somebody and we're hitting it off and I'm still being impacted by bullshit. You know what I mean? That's why. And what's, what's really driving me and what's pissing me off and it's kind of pushing me into this relationship even maybe faster than I want it to go is just the fact that there's some part of you when you get when you get your heart crushed by an evil person that wants to crush any feeling you ever had for them. It's I don't know what I'm not saying I'm an evil person who wants to do that. There's a soft side to me that really hates to see my love for old girlfriends die like that and repeatedly die again anytime it sprouts back up, you know what I mean? There's a part of me that really can't take it. I'm not going to lie. But and that part of me that, that tries to kill off old feelings is actually, like, very weak and isn't, I don't even think it's capable of doing what it needs to do yet. You know what I mean? So that's kind of why I'm frustrated and, cause, because I know dating this girl is going to also, and like, it's going to be fun and it's going to be great. But on my, on my emotional side and my past side and my baggage side, I'm going to have to fucking haul ass. You know what I mean? I'm going to have to do really good which isn't a bad thing i'm just it's just a lot kind of a lot of pressure and kind of a lot of extra footwork and extra heavy emotion to process when i'm already dealing with current things you know let alone some crap that's traumatized me in the past that i didn't even know was going to traumatize me i didn't even know what tra you could be traumatized by a relationship that was seemingly good but i guess you can pretty much get traumatized by anything which is another problem about life that, that goes swept under the rug but uh yeah other than that things are good me and the girl are talking about recipes and Things that we would like to do for fun and plans. Yeah, it, it's like, there's a part of me that's very, like, attracted and excited and feels like I'm very in, a, in, a, in, in romance right now. But there's just that knowledge, there's that truth in my head that I'm, that every moment that I cuddle this new girl, you know, every moment that I hug her goodbye or she kisses me on the cheek or something like that. I have to, like, really be in every one of those moments. And I have to, like, be, like, watching in the back of my mind. And I have to be, like, ready to crush. I have to, like, use my... These new feelings for this girl to, like... Fucking destroy feelings I had for previous girls. It's it's fucking weird, dude. I don't I'm not saying it like it's a fun thing, you know. Someone might someone might like you might have a douchebag ex who you really who deserves that, but my exes weren't all bad. They might have had extreme darkness that definitely outshined their any brightness they had, but they weren't all bad, so I don't feel like 
I want to do that to any of them. I, I like the memories with every single one of my exes, pretty much, pretty much every one of them. The only ones I don't like the memories with at all are like, one or two one night stands where the girl was just a kind of a fucking douche. Just trying to get fucking money out of me and shit. I hate, I hate that when they got like the, the gall to fucking act like they're trying to be your girlfriend or like trying to be a, a new real close, like friends with benefits that could turn into a girlfriend or something, stuff like that. Like they try to act like that. And then it just turns out like, Oh no, they just wanted money and food. That's like the cringiest shit, dude. Anyways, these these women just a few years later, you know, I'm not like 45 or something yet, but these women... Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. These, these women, especially the one I'm talking to now, they're just so much fucking better, dude. It's like they actually know like what's good in a relationship and how to start doing one or start one and build a bond instead of just start one, have a nice little honeymoon phase where you're flirting with each other, have sex, and then that was the peak of the relationship and no matter how hard you try to repeat those fake ass rushed fucking feelings they just never spike up again that i think that shit is what leaves you with this like long-term regret mixed with nostalgia bullshit anyways apart from all the negativity i am excited to be dating somebody and get and and have romance for sure i'm not you know i'm not trying to seem like an ungrateful person i'm definitely grateful for that and i want to get more grateful for that it's just because things could obviously be worse and i could be stuck forever wishing for romance and not get it but i'm lucky you know just put myself out there and get lucky <laughs> the, the mic classic um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much just the stuff I, I was thinking about talking about. And I'm hoping most of that can sort of start to wash away. I know, I know it will for sure. Like, while me and this girl are dating, I just don't know exactly how hard it's gonna wash away like is it gonna stay away but I, I mean you could fear anything in the future though you could no matter how good a new relationship looks you could just be sitting there fearing all the time about how they might leave one day or it could hurt as bad as it as the past hurt hurt you and all this crap you could be worrying about but it's like and that's something that I realized that I have to get better at is just like the same old life classic, non-attachment and gratitude and being able to take any loss on the fucking chin no matter what. It's the same old life challenges. It's a new relationship, new romance, but it doesn't mean it's going to be challenge-free is what I'm saying. But yeah, me and the girl have been hitting it off and I'm feeling a lot better than romantically and emotionally than I have in forever, so... Try not to take that for granted, but there are a couple things weighing weighing on my mind more than I would like. And we'll see how things go. I gotta clean up some clean up my closet so it doesn't look so stupid. It's about the only thing that's really messy in my in my room and everything, but I gotta clean up some stuff. I know I'm gonna get some nostalgic feelings no matter what I do. It'll just remind me too much of past times and stuff. Yeah, you wouldn't actually think that you're actually, like, too emotionally nostalgic and afraid and hurt to look in your closet. You know what I mean? Like, I had no idea that I was that 
had that deep of feelings for the, over the shit, you know what I mean? Um, well, yeah, that's a little bit about what I've been going through past few days. Um, and that's pretty much all the Nate, most of the, well, not that all that stuff is negative, but that's most of the negative stuff. And it, it's tough because we got struggles with my dog and struggles with my family. So it's just like, it's not even that you're, a lot of the times, you're not even just like sad over like your past ex-boyfriend or girlfriend or is like, that's part of it. But what also hurts is that you lost, you used some of that time when you were younger and missed out on it with your dog and missed out on it with your mom and missed out on it with your siblings and missed out on it with the rest of your family. You took that time, you shared it with somebody, that person was scum, the worst kind of scum. You would almost rather be murdered. Then have them do that to you if you're if you're a genuine heart who is loving. So I don't know. I like I don't know if the world just filled with like a bunch of reptilian brains who like got adamantium hearts and they just go around stabbing each other in the heart for fun because it doesn't hurt. Or I don't know. I don't know what is going on here. The youngest generation of idiots always takes over and then they sweep up the the ranks. So basically, I was dating like a nineteen year old. More than one. <laughs> and I think this is like a young, innocent girl who just got out of high school and the world is ahead of her. No, this is a girl, a grill, who has, is a couple years younger than me and, and they have this whole repertoire of boyfriends and they have this whole fucking lineage of kids younger than them that they grew up with that are way younger than me because they're younger than somebody who's younger than me. And the, so you're like dating somebody who has an attitude of a fucking juvenile and the body of a 19 year old. You know what I mean? It's just fucking weird, dude. And somehow they're like smart enough because they grew up in the internet age. And like I said, they grew up at a bigger school and they had more experiences in romance and stuff. So they're like smart enough to, to cheat people over and smart enough to lie and smart enough to, if that is smart, they're, what's the word? They're cunning enough to fucking lie about very important things that you would absolutely tell anyone you were dating if you even had somewhat of a heart. But yeah, that, that's just, it, it's tough to think about because if it happened to you or it, like, if it, like me, if it happened multiple times, it can, it can really fuck you up, dude. And the girl I'm, I'm so the girl I'm with now, the girl I'm about to start dating, um, still can't, still can't process all this. I don't know, she, she seems to think like me, like, I don't bother with her with all this crap, but she seems to really treasure like, <clears throat> sorry, I had a, <clears throat> too much food earlier, I guess. Um, she seems to, I lost track, fuck. She seems to have those values and seems to treasure or yeah treasure the the real the real side of romance right so a lot of these kids from fucking 17 to 25 range and maybe beyond if they don't fucking grow up are just like playing little fucking games right even if it means it's going to ruin somebody's life, they're just playing little games because they're the girl and they can find replacement dick. 
And then... When you meet an actual woman who's a little bit older than that. It's just, it's just like night and fucking day. Like, like this person got humbled at some part at some point and is a literal fucking goddess on the inside when it comes to morals and ethics and what values and what they're, it's crazy. I don't know if, I don't think all girls make it there. Obviously, I don't think they all, I don't know. It probably depends on how they treated their ex-boyfriends, how many ex-boyfriends they actually had, uh, how spoiled were they, how good-looking were they so they got spoiled by the world. It probably depends on a lot of things. Their upbringing, their friend groups and everything. But once, I think that's one of the biggest things I'm experiencing is like, This girl is ready for that adult level, super deep romance. And then it's like, are you Mike? You know what I mean? Like I've like the world is questioning me. It's like, you said you wanted this, bro. You know what I mean? So are you level ready for the, for the real romance? You know what I mean? Are you ready for the real deal? And it's like, that's kind of something I've been struggling with is like pr getting ready for it because Kind of came out of the blue. I wasn't really planning on dating anyone, and it just kind of fell into my lap. LOL, LOL. Um, and at the same time, it's, it's just dating, too, like... I ain't stopping it. I want it. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't want to say that cause I'm got an ego, I guess, but uh, you know, the soft side of me wants it to happen. You know, he's not putting up any barriers. So it's like, All right, life is challenging. It's like, you have to simultaneously have a soft side. That's opening the door to your heart. And you also have to have a side that, is strong and isn't mean, but is okay with if, if things don't work out there, you know what I mean? They're, they're strong and they're independent and somehow they're okay if it works and they're okay if it doesn't like being all that at once is hard. You know what I mean? Sure. Being, being good in your life when you got somebody backing you up every day, cooking your food, folding your clothes, doing your laundry, paying your half of your bills or more and loving the shit out of you going to the grocery store and wasting their time for you. I've done that for people. I've been that person. It's easy. To, and, and the person I was with still couldn't be good to me. You know what I mean? They, they were glimpses, beautiful fucking glimpses, but they could never fucking just stick with, they would never stick to it. It's like people, here's another thing is you might've a long time ago when you were a kid or growing up, like made a pact with yourself where like, I'm going to stick with this. You know what I mean? I don't mean to be weird. But I'm going to stick with this, Mike. You know what I mean? I'm going to stick with this dude, bro, girl, if you're a girl, I'm going to stick with this. I want to live long. I want to prosper. I want to live a long life and have a lot of fun and have a lot of friends and romance and long-term friendships that are deep and really mean something and all. And then you got other people who enjoy all those things on a surface level and they're probably spoiled as fuck and rich as fuck. And, but they're, they never made that pact with themselves and they're just there. It's like you're, you got the, it's almost like you got these like slug brain, like robot human beings. I don't, I don't that are, I don't know if they're so infatuated with death that they they want other people to not like life. or I, I could never explain it. I always try to figure it out, but I really don't know what's going on. Ain't no way, like, people are that dark and that evil and that stuck up and that obsessed about their young girl body, you know what I mean? It's just annoying because girls who treated me like shit, girlfriends, girls back in school who never gave me the time of day and looked at me like I was a piece of shit. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot of those girls don't look that good anymore already. I'm not even that old. Or they... I guess I'm lying to myself a little bit. Um, there's just like a lot of things about them that aren't even good. 
and they treated me so bad my entire life. And now it's just like, I'm about to start dating a girl who looks better than them, talks better than them, works harder than them, is nicer to me, get more self-sacrificial already. You know what I mean? Like, even if we didn't date, she's already been better than... Some have even gone so far as to tear down my poor posters. Little wonder nobody's won yet. Bummer. <sighs> Which leaves me in a pretty predicament. But hey, my pain might be your game. By collecting just a handful of flyers, you can be the first, and at this rate, the only winner of the most tested and areas contest in Midgard's history. This here's a sample of one of our ads. Breathtaking, isn't it? Now it's up to you to find all six. Leave no shell unturned, no pond on plum. That prize is as good as mine. Ah, since you're here, you wouldn't happen to have any condor coins on you, would you? This job may keep the shell over my head, but my real passion's coin collecting. I'd gladly part with some oddities and commodities in exchange for those little mutes. What is going on here? Music is fucking weird. <laughs> I like the characters so far in this. Some of them in this game have that... Just kind of like a modern day RPG thing. Like characters have that sort of... Uh, Sims like robot... AI generated feel sometimes. Uh, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Kisaragi, I like that. What's that other word next to her? Oh, leader. Fucking vertical ass words. I'm a horizontal ass person. I like them. I like them thick. I'm really excited to open that Final Fantasy Rebirth box. Whatever. I know it's not going to have much interesting in it because they don't have manuals anymore, but... I don't know why I'm excited. I just want to look at the cover art and stuff. I haven't looked at it yet. I, I tagged along a little bit with Max. Is she always going to have these rags on? What the hell? I tagged along a little bit with Max and uh, Simmons. I'd like to watch Caleb and Seven Ray D and some other people, but just <laughs> I can't watch everybody.
I don't know. I like these remake games. I feel like a big part of what we like about them, though, is just, like, the potential for future stuff from Square Enix. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, their games have been getting better ever since Final Fantasy XV. Not that that is a straight bad game either. I don't really know how good it is. But it's, it's pretty easy to say that Remake was better... 16 is better. Rebirth is probably better than both of those games. The reviews for Rebirth are actually kind of shit, so I don't know what's going on with those. I have a feeling I'm not going to agree with those. I'll watch some of them maybe like halfway through my playthrough or something. But yeah, we kind of talked about the like dark nostalgia of romance and getting older and stuff. But uh, other than that, I, I do have some good nostalgic feelings too popping up here and there. Partially because of this game and remembering a couple years ago when me and my parents were uh, making some hamburger helper. And I had this game to come back to and it was just like one of the most relaxing nights. And I had a lot of fun like diving into Remake. Especially those first few days was just a fucking blast. I don't know. It was the graphics. It was this area and the slums. Uh, it was Tifa and Avalanche and the nostalgic feelings that they all gave. And the combat was nice and non-offensive. <laughs> like, not bad. I feel like combat in video games... Has just, like, never been better than, like, Elden Ring level, and people just kind of want it just to be decent, like, as long as it's not, like, offensively bad. <laughs> We're okay. Like, it doesn't even have to be good or innovative. It just has to not be bad. And this one does have some innovation, for sure. I don't... At least with Cloud, I don't feel like the movement for Cloud is kind of like slow and clunky in combat and stuff, but it looked like the movement was way different in the next game, so we'll see. Might not feel like that so much anymore. I don't know how long we'll meander around this uh, DLC or whatever. I don't know what this is called. Side campaign, I guess. I know I'm going to spend a little bit too long here, but... I don't want to spend way too long here, is the thing. <laughs> I don't want it to be, like, a week from now, and then I finally start Rebirth. I'll be feeling sad about that, then. Uh, that's pretty much it for me. Yuffie's pretty cool. A lot of good nostalgic feelings. And another thing is, like... I could just go on and on, right? Uh, when you're going through this time of change and you're, like, opening the door to your heart again after it's been shut for so long and stuff like that, I'm just, you know, speaking in symbols and stuff, but or metaphors or whatever you want to call it. Um, but when you're doing this, it's almost like the past very much comes more alive. Even if you've been dealing with the past for years, all of a sudden it becomes even more alive and it's like a war again. Like if you ever felt a war with one of your exes inside your head, like you were it was a battle of loving them and hating them. It was a battle of dealing with their bullshit and enjoying the good things they brought to the table and stuff like that. Then later on, you get this nostalgic battle where it's like the memories are battling each other in a sort of way. The memories of some of my good girlfriends and some of my good times are battling the fear and the trauma from those same years, you know? 
It's it's inter it's it's weird. I don't know. I honestly didn't expect half of this half of these feelings to pop up and all this shit just from like starting to date a girl. You know, I kind of expected it to happen like after we were dating for a while and more feelings start to develop. I guess. I don't know. I'm not much of a dater, and I don't want to make my whole life about dating or anything like that, but it is fun to talk about it a little bit when it's changing your life for the better, you know? I've already... And it was crazy, like, I felt so stuck, and, like, the second I started talking to this girl and we were talking about dating, like... I don't know, I just stopped feeling stuck. I started feeling like I wanted to keep moving. I started... That's why I'm playing this game. That's why I started playing more stuff for my channel and stopped being so afraid of just, like, continuing on and stuff like that. Um. And, yeah, one last thing about the, the dark romance crap. I don't know what kind of topic that it, all that crap is, but there's something about it. Something needs a topic name. Uh... Yeah, I know that sounds kooky, but part of it honestly feels like idiot girlfriends and, you know, you might have an idiot boyfriend. I'm talking, I always talking from my perspective. But these, the idiot girlfriends who douched me, like, I can, it's almost like I can feel them, like, bubbling up. Like, I don't even care about them. I'm, like, about to date somebody and I'm not dating them out of spite like they did. I'm not just rushing after being done with me and going to date my ex-boyfriend like they did. You know what I mean? I'm not rushing to go turn into a lesbian and crush my ba my past boyfriend's heart by switching gender gender preferences and also making sure they know about it, even though they're not even in your life anymore. Like the, the shit these women do are super is is super fucking weird to me and. And it's especially weird when you consider how nice of a boyfriend I was. And how they couldn't stop singing my praises for years straight. I mean, like, what would you guys have fucking done if I wasn't a good boyfriend? Like, holy shit, dude. You people are fucking scum. But what I'm saying here is, like... You kind of have to, like... Like I said, you got to kill off some of your old feelings. But you also have to realize that this world is very, like, spiritually connected. And whether people want to admit it or not, like, you can tell when somebody's thinking about you. There's a reason people pop up in your dreams randomly for no reason when you haven't even thought about them in years. And they'll, like, pop up in, like, the most vivid, weird way. Pop like, they're almost inside of your inside of your subconscious or some shit, you know what I mean? And it'll be like a real, like, reflecting weird story that shouldn't, shouldn't have just came from your head, you know? Doesn't make sense coming just from your head. Um, but that has happened to me a lot, so I think that's what's going on, is that I was feeling nostalgia for the fast, for the fast, for the, for the past few months, about random ex-girlfriends and that those feelings are, are most likely for the for the most part like them probably missing me missing their past like I do missing they're feeling that all this type of shit that I talk about and they're just now feeling it because a lot of them once they were done dating me or they were done dating some other nice guy out there who got his shit rocked by some girl. They they didn't just stop dating the person and leave on good terms. They, they left like a fucking idiot and they desperately tried to crush that person's heart. They desperately tried to date other people as fast as they possibly could to cr crush any feelings they had. They'll take that years of bonding and they'll just crush it for fun, whatever. And then what they don't realize is that's the worst possible thing you ever could have done. Leaving that person who loved you in the beginning was a stupid idea. 
but then like absolutely trying to crush them like a fucking freak bitch is the <laughs> is the worst thing like you're basically controlled by the devil you're basically a murderer at that point and then yeah that's how it goes in the brief period after they after you all stop dating and stuff no i sound like i'm from texas or the countryside um and then a couple of years later here we are four or five years later i'm about to start dating and it has nothing to do like i'm not doing it because i'm desperate i'm not doing it because uh i desperately want to replace the feelings of of old girlfriends i don't really care about that i'm not doing it because i had that phase a little bit and no mine was not rushed to be instantly after i was dating a girl like these girls be going somewhere the next day and and try you know it's like how'd you even how'd you even have that set up <laughs> you know what i mean we was just together how'd you even set that up that fast that's fucking weird scum dude and again even though i'm talking about shit i always talk about I just talked for, like, a little while with you guys. Massive fucking relief. I feel massively relieved. Shouldn't, I should not feel this relieved talking to a fucking microphone. Okay, somehow it got way too hot here, so... Turn the fan on, sadly, for a second. I want to start playing here. And I'm like, once I feel relieved, it's like, why, why keep beating a dead horse? <laughs> um. And even just venting that with you guys, <clears throat> I feel so much, so much better, and just like. Where I was nervous about dating a new girl, talking and venting that with you guys, I don't feel nervous right now. I, I feel like she could she could be here right now, this minute, and and I would be ready to start enjoying the the beginnings of a new relationship. You know what I mean? Whereas before I said this to you guys, I couldn't I couldn't understand why I felt so off off. Putting feelings off feelings. So I think that's pretty much it for me. For an update for me about romance and my nostalgia and this game. And some uh, little brief tidbits about memories from a few years ago. Playing playing this game and enjoying some good times with my parents. And... and uh, Another thing is just like, I could sit there and dwell, 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 dwell all day on, on that week period a year and a half ago when I played this game and, and I was really enjoying myself and I have good memories about my dog and my parents back then. And the meals we were cooking and everything like that. And that's all great. But if I sit there and dwell on that, what am I doing? I'm saying no to now. You know what I mean? Like, it's fine to have a little bit of that stuff bubble up when you can't stop it. But it's another thing when you're saying no to now. You know what I mean? So now can't be a moment that's great like that. Now can't be something I look back on very fondly. And truthfully, too, because you can look back on stuff and, and look at it in a good way, but it might not have been actually good, you know what I mean? It's only good if you lived it good, and and that's why I remember that time period, because I had so much fun with this game. My family was, was doing great at that point. Um, great meals, great times with the dog. It was just a good, it was a good time period, right? And... My brother was still around back then, and things were going well back then, and...
Oh, it's 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 tough, guys. But I just thought I'd share some of the some of those beating nostalgic nostalgic feelings. I even felt like a nostalgia wave just for f I don't even know what is going on. <laughs> I didn't know nostalgia was going to be the biggest thing in life sometimes. Like I was watching Maximilian play his his recent playthrough from Final Fantasy 7 and, and I was getting nostalgic just watching him finish the game. Cuz I knew that would probably be like one of the last times I ever watch him play that game, you know what I mean? And I had enjoyed enjoyed him playing it and now it's already over he, he rushed through it real quick and we're all done and gotta move on all of a sudden you know is it just me or is this really quiet Look at this chick. <laughs> she kind of looks bummy from the back, and then she looks like kind of legit from the front. Like she's got that ass crack on there, and <laughs> shit. What is going on there? I did. I kind of didn't want to get into a hub world experience, but but I think that new game has a lot of this kind of vibe, so maybe it's good to get back into it. Why is it so quiet? Sure you're in the right store? Ooh. The sorcerer's armlet has no extra magic for me. What the hell? A oh, magician's bracelet, though. Oh yeah, we're not buying none of that. You guys looking like me in the corner of my room over here. Look, it's Scarlett Johansson. Hey, that girl's over here too. The fuck? Searching for candidates. Hey, you fucking weirdo! Straight out of Guilty Gear Strive. She seems relatively agile and has substantial muscle mass for her stature. Damn. An acceptable candidate. Hey, uh, you want to tell me what you're mumbling about? My apologies. My name is Chadley. Would you be interested in helping me with my research? You're fucking weird, Chadley. Nice to meet you. So, what are you researching? Combat. It would entail doing battle with a summon in a virtual arena using this portable simulator. Interested? Nah. Sure. Why not? Oh, now she wants to do virtual simulators? What the hell? Did we have this before? I don't even know. I don't think so. I remember Shiva and Ifri. Oh shit, is this guy strong? Oh, he's pretty strong. Damn, dude. I don't think I can beat this guy yet. Not at my skill level. Oh, 
Am I playing Street Fighter 6 here? What the fuck? Shame. Shame. It was a close match. However, I did manage no, it to get some valuable data. Analyze and learn from your mistakes so that you can claim victory next time. Sonan's gotta be back by now. I skipped whatever he said on action. You're ready to do battle with the virtual summon? When you feel suitably prepared, please. Yeah, that's not happening. I hate I hate bosses in this game. There's like no real counter without extreme studying to half of their fucking shit. I hate fucking study bosses where there's no skill to them, it's all study skill. Make the parry suck last, goddamn. Got the place a guard dog. Figured it'd spare my tenants the trouble of chasing off nosy men. Who's jamming over here? This is a state of emergency. This is actually gonna be quite the journey, because we got about ten hours on this game, and then we're probably gonna play the other game for like forty plus hours. I don't know how long. Uh-oh. Damn it, dude. Thought that dog was about to lay down for a sec. I get it. Don't tell me obvious gamer stuff. Damn dog. Can I cheat this and get up here? Damn it, dude. They would design this like this. Probably walk past him right now, but I don't want to. Okay, I can't. Hey, we're good. No! No, there's a fucking. Was I supposed to know that, dude? Maybe I was supposed to see that blue thing there. That would happen to me. Couldn't they just give me of like one more second there though? Like what the fuck? Was it that important to make that third sleep that short? In a way, his dog didn't notice us there. All right, we got it this time. But. Just what do you think you're doing, young lady? <laughs> what do you want with that exactly? Better yet, who are you? Heard some punks have been hassling the nice people at the Happy Turtle, ripping down their flyers. Are you one of them? Mm -mm. So you're trying to sneak a peek at the Merc? Not that I blame you. Boy's easy in the eyes. I'll give him that much. 
But cut your losses, honey. Unless you like your men silent and emotionally unavailable. <laughs> Merck's built the wall around himself so damn high, even he can't see over it. Damn. Never tell you what he's thinking. I don't know if this girl was in the original game at all. I tried to get through to him, but would he listen? Would he? I'm really not here for... She is a good character, though. Then what are you here for? For, uh, directions. But I'm all good now. Thanks. The happy turtle jingle is actually kind of fire. Only because the girl was singing it, though. What's with these happy days fucking songs? Ugh, chakra. Shit don't heal nothing. Especially if I don't level it up is the problem. The, the thing is, the only enemies that are fucking... ...can kill me are too strong. So Chakra isn't good against them. That was a close one. Chakra is basically just good for saving MP and saving money and stuff like that. Against actual enemies that are hard, you would not want to use it. Oh, I don't know how much I want to deal with this minigame. Damn. Uh, what are you talking about? This isn't weird. It's super cute. Super cute? <laughs> More like super lame. Not as lame as Midgar. Huh? Just saying how much I was looking forward to playing Fort Condor. I could really use the training, you know? Sure, I'll put you through your paces. But you do know it's gonna cost you, right? One match, three gil. Hey up. Clash of Clans. Oh, I play Clash Royale, baby. Where are you going? Yeah. No one's got any range? The hell is that then? Oh, shit. I better fight these motherfuckers. They're heavily invested over here. If we run them over, this is gonna be easy. Oh, they're fucked. We won. Maybe? Oh yeah, come on. Get in there, guard dog. Congest. Spawn them all here. Oh, I got magic too. Use it on their next guy, I guess. Oh 
Oh, shit. I need you. And then... You. Oh, what the fuck? Remember, they just did fuck me up. spawn one person over here. her up. We got a conduit coin. I don't know how much I'm gonna like. Um, excuse me. I cheated and I still. Lost. I knew you cheated. <laughs> what can I say? Talent trumps all. <laughs> Whatever. You still owe me for my time. It's gotta be worth seven gil at least. As if. Damn. Be harsh to her. You just don't quit, do you? Yeah, if you can keep playing, I'm not going to be doing that. It's a lot of fun minigame, but I don't got time for that shit. Is there a materia in here? You're creeping on the school? Time for Stamp, the loyal little helper. Bow wow, I'm Stamp, the good boy who never stops helping. Captain's given me a very important mission to buy bread for tonight's dinner. So with his super duper nose, Stamp went into town to sniff out a bakery. He went a sniff sniff here and a sniff sniff. Damn, look at that girl. She's attentive. Sausage and cake didn't distract him. Using his trusty nose, Who's that? Is that Marlene? The best, most yummiest bakery in the whole city. And from that bakery, he picked out the best, most yummiest smelling loaf of bread. Thinking about how pleased the captain would be, Stamp went trotting back to base, wagging his tail and singing a happy song. But on the road home, he came across a little girl crying all by himself. What's wrong? Stamp asked the forlorn little fellow. I'm so hungry. I haven't eaten ages, Koopo. The Moogle sniffled. Never fear. Stamp's here, and I know just how to help. So Stamp gave the crying Moogle his loaf of bread. Thank you, Koopo, the Moogle exclaimed, his palm bouncing outside his head. Then Stamp waved goodbye and returned to base. When he got here, he went straight to the captain and told him what had happened. The captain was very proud of Stamp. Helping that Moogle was the right thing to do. What the fuck is it? The captain laughed as he gave Stamp a good scratch behind the ears. And Stamp let out a happy bark, for he knew that he was the good boy. The end. That's all for today. Did everyone enjoy that? You're talking to me? Let me jump down from here. Come on. Are they gonna do it again? Motherfucks. Stamp went into town to sniff out a bakery. He went to sniff sniff here and a sniff sniff 
Using his trusty nose, lady. to find the best, most yummiest bakery in the whole city. And from that bakery, he picked out the best, most yummiest smelling local. Oh, you know the landlady, Marvel. Oh, someone certainly dresses the part of the fish. This here's the headquarters of the neighborhood. I went up here, right? It's wasting time now. Oh, maybe I didn't. We must have found a gig. I mean, of course I did. It's in here. This is the back route down here. Yeah. The hell, there's something underground there. With all these girls with short hair. These guys in their little side areas. Good chips. A cat stole some food. I want to see what that says. It looks interesting. I want to be a turtle now. Turtle workshop. Where's this music coming from? The cats were playing. That's quite the outfit, but wait till you see my stuff. Something I missed back over there. I didn't think they were gonna reuse this area so hard. Hopefully, it's not all like this. I never got what was on her arm. It looks like a cast, but I have no clue what it actually is. Enough already, Where are they? They should have been here by now. Waiting for someone? Ooh, you got stood up. As if. if. Wait, who are you? <laughs> Don't mean to be rude or anything, kid. But do you mind? I'm not exactly in the mood. Kid. Not in the mood. Go bug literally anyone else. Damn, I didn't know Jesse was such a sass or... Honestly, how can you not... Oh, so look at him. We probably carry more 
Okay. With all those chunky ass frame rate, what's going on? Like clipping everywhere and or whatever, glitching. Oh I'm stuck on the never ending fucking slum village quest. Where are you gonna find it? scare me like that. I'm highly strung. You're trying to kill me? Or... Who the hell are you? Who am I? Someone who doesn't spend all day muttering to themselves in the shadows. Like some kind of Shinra spy. Say what? Me? No. -uh. I was just, you know, thinking about stuff. That's what I do. Yeah, like how to bag that sweet, sweet Ford Condor prize money. It's my ticket out of here. <laughs> so you're after the Grandmaster too? Sorry to burst your bubble, Mr. Shadow Lurker, but I'll be the one taking home those spoils of war. Flame Lurker. Well, over my dead body, you will. My life's on the line here. I deserve to eat. I deserve to live. Oh, fuck. I do not want to do more of this. This is the last one for this episode. Just trying to play the actual game. Turret. Are we over here? Oh, we can spawn here. Okay. These guys are gonna shred this shit. And all I gotta do is go back here. And that. Oh, they fucked us. Oh, I wish I had guns that stayed on my side forever. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Go like that. And then we'll just push this side real hard after and we'll be good. Oh yeah, he just fucked up. Guns for you. And we got an old riot trooper coming. We got one of you. We got you. And you. And you. Suck it, Johnny. Yeah, I don't, this, is, this is a fun little mini game, but I do not want to play it when it's hard. I'll tell you that. What? No, this can't be insane. Ain't so. 
Goodbye, fortune. Goodbye. Europe against a Clash Royale doucher, man. What do you think? Taking down Midgar a citizen at a time. Hmm? Wait, what'd you say? That all of Midgar is gonna suffer the same fate. Am I getting anything for these? Look at this cutie. That's oh, got short hair. <laughs> That's fucked up. We got that. We got this weirdo. What does that mean? Hey, look at that. That one wasn't even on the radar and I found it. I'm awesome. What is this one? Where are you? What sort of burnt cake are you eating here? So when your opponent leads with this, you respond with this? This game is insane. Hey there, Sis. How's that conversation? No, it's another one of these. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to disturb anyone. My daughter's been dying to play this game, and I promised to teach her. But first, I have to teach myself. That game wouldn't happen to be Fort Condor, would it? If you want, I'll help you figure stuff out. You, you will? No. Thanks. I just want to play. Damn it, now I wasted so much time basically doing nothing, dude. Um, sir? Hey! Hey! Over here! Yeah. Can't believe those freaking morons. They damn near got themselves eaten trying to hide that stupid poster. You stay away from that factory, you hear? The place has monsters coming out of the walls. That's where we're going. Fiends have been He's acting up since the bombing. Like they know something we don't. Just wish that Merc were still around. He'd sort those critters out. <laughs> what a douche over here. Why, hello there. Forgive me for saying, but you remind me of a dear friend of mine. Perhaps you've met him? I don't know. Is he Shinra too? Perhaps, perhaps. My name is Roche, by the way. Or Roche. Your ill-concealed hostility and exotic wardrobe would give me pause. But not today, for I am here on business of a personal nature. Looking for my aforementioned friend. What's his name? Oh, I only wish I knew. But I can tell you that he has a real need for speed, as they say. And while he boasts a very large sword, his first love is plainly his mount. Yeah, he sounds great. Say. Is that Fort Condor I see over there? You play? I'm always ready for a round of Fort Condor. Oh my god, dude. I suspect a delicate flower like you would wither if exposed to my scorching passion for the game. Maybe after some practice. Well, his rank is much too high for me. Where's a turtle? I was hidden. <laughs> gotcha. You thought you could hide from me, didn't you? Happy turtle. <laughs> Stranger danger. What the fuck? 
So it's getting a little too real here. What the hell is this fat kid doing? How do you hear it from here? It's like probably at the back of this area. Uh, shit. I guess we'll just start breaking this shit. More chakra? What the fuck? That's weird. There's like two of them right, right in the same area. You only need one. These early game attacks are ridiculous. You did. He's all over the place. Ah. 
Dude, why do you guys have so much fucking health? Their status effects are so annoying, they got so much fucking health. Oh my god, and they have an attack that does that much damage. Oh, I hate these guys already. I'm gonna break. The next level spells are so trash, though. Fucking bullshit. This game is fun until enemies just keep seeking move you to death. Like, all I died from there was getting repeatedly sleeped and then heat seeking overpowered moved. Fucking annoying, dude. That's basically how they kill you in every single fight. It either kills you with a cutscene or it kills you with a heat seeking overpowered move. That was a cringe ass fight, I ain't gonna lie. See if something around here can help us, I guess. Oh, an enemy with a normal health bar, sort of. Can you stop attacking for a second, you fucking douche? Look at this thing. What a douche. Music being everywhere is kind of annoying. It makes you think there's like something hidden everywhere and there just isn't. What else do we got? I guess none of this is going to help me basically at all with that overpowered fight of douchebags. this crap. Oh, that's kind of cool. Maybe we'll play a little bit more. I'm like almost good enough to beat these guys, but I just don't want to deal with the bullshit death. And try again, I guess. Hopefully, if we can focus on one, maybe. Ah, 
Ah, she has no stagger whatsoever. Weak move. I want to die again. Oh, that sleep is fucking annoying, dog, or whatever it is. It's like the only thing that kills you in this fight. Oh, and that bullshit. The fact that she has nothing that, like, makes her move fast. Fuck you! Fucking weirdos. Quit attacking random shit. Can you just not use the best move possible when I got this guy staggered, you fucking annoying piece of shit? And then he misses the first leaping slot. They should not be able to cast sleep that fast. I don't care what you say. Not in a 1v2. That's for sure. Fucking shit on you, fucking weirdo. What kind of bullshit are you doing to me now? Unblockable, undodgeable? What you gonna do now that you don't got your buddy? I'm just gonna keep. Peddling after me and I can never heal, right? Weird fuck. Got to use a potion. Why would they even sell those? And the poison lasts so long and, and you get hit with it every time. It's so cringe. Leaping slash me twice and finishes sadness off on me. How about that? Douche. All that, and you're just a weakling by yourself. Douche. It's better be HP up. Fuck you. There's my sweet sweet. The happy turtle. Okay, that wasn't so bad, but it's a little bit oddly hard for the, like an initial. 
area. And hopefully they don't make us come back here again. have an enemy now. Poisoned, infinite damage, grappled into it, ad nauseum, infinite, infinitium. Can't get this weird fuck to stop doing this shit. Oh my god, something does too much damage. Dun 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 Materia, what's that song? HP up Probably give me one in like a second. I'll play it for a second more here and then I'm gonna head out. I feel like deadly dodge I don't use. This one, too. Without enough, There's not, like, any normal enemies in the game. They all do weird shit, so you can't even practice this kind of thing. Parrying or Punisher mode or anything like that. It doesn't describe it properly or like do a training mode, so you like don't really know how it works. Kind of annoying. Very, very annoying. Alright, let's put on our good old HP up for now. Save it up. I'll putz around a little bit more, then I'm headed out, guys. Thanks a bunch for tuning in. Gotta sleep it up and I think I'm I think we're I'm having a date tomorrow, most likely. And if not, I'll be gaming a bunch and probably have a date the next weekend, so. At this point, I might as well just cheat and look up how to find all the flyers in case I miss one. Like, what's with this music right here, but there's not a poster, I'm confused. Just we save those for now. I don't remember how to get the next level unlocked or whatever. Or the next sphere. Hey there. All right. I've never seen a soldier up close before. Wow, that shimmer got real. Stranger Assholes. 
Shinra invaded the Titan Force. Now they're saying <laughs> Wu Tai put out. Trains are stuck. I'm just gonna take that as a sign. We're not supposed to come over here. Probably miss an item down there. There's like already people selling rebirth for cheap or cheaper than it. Well, this guy's like a highly detailed smoker. What the? You like a map? Floating through the air? Is that the one I don't have? I didn't think they had quest details like that. Well, fuck. If I read that, I might have seen it now. No, I probably won't find the area you gotta look for it easily. How the hell are you supposed to get it floating through the air, ain't it? This guy is weird. Of course I'm missing one, bro. Fuck. Floating through the air. By this pizza shop, man. Come on, over here. Oh, where the hell am I? Oh, 
whatever. I don't know why I care so much. You probably don't get anything that's like really that useful. The only thing hard about these games is that some enemies are fucking stupid. You can't attack them because they just always don't get staggered and they just attack and stagger you. That's like the only difficulty with these games. That's why they need to make the parrying and stuff like more usable. Like so spammy. The parrying and the dodging and the per precision dodging. Everything, every defense aspect needs to be not annoying. Because every one of them is somewhat or, or very annoying. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if the new game plays like exactly like this one or it's going to have some differences. Well, we looked basically everywhere and somehow we couldn't find this fucking thing. This guy probably has it. The one, or it's probably over by the fucking train tracks. The one spot I didn't check. Or it was floating over there. <laughs> Fuck, I don't want to go back in there. There was like two musics in there too, that's the thing. That's what makes me want to go back in there, but I don't know. They got the speakers, but they ain't pumping. Go back in that fucking place, man. And probably still not gonna be in there. like music like right away right is this the turtle music I don't know what music this is God, this music being right here is obnoxious. It is the turtle music, but it's just, it's not even leading you to the one in the air. It's just leading you to that deeper turtle music. But all of the other spots, there's only one turtle. It's just weird, dude. Like, according to the music, it should be right here, but somehow it's fucking not. Like behind here or something? No. Yeah, that's really weird. No, it's not here, and I'm now just wasting time. Like, that's what I'm mad about. The hell you want?
trying. Cats. What the fuck is this annoying ass music here? <laughs> to myself I guess it's leading you back here closer to the assholes it's still weird though I dodged and it didn't come out. I hate their grab attacks in this game. It just like negates your dodge, it's annoying. guys gone it's almost debatable that there should just be two flyers here too well I just wasted a metric shit ton of time take all that shit though even though I won't be able to use like any of it in this place <laughs> Fucking turtle. Turtle ass bullshit. This is like the only RPG area in the game, I swear. They'll probably just hand me this last one. Hey, it's those trucks. All right, thank you. That's what those. There's probably somewhere with music, and I didn't notice it. All right, let's go check out that avalanche building. I guess. The thing is, the story would be a little bit more interesting to me, but I don't know if, like, Yuffie was actually... had anything to do with... Midgar. In the original game. Oh, and I might be up on this fucking building or some shit, too. Whatever, I give up. So why is this game so chunky and leggy? I swear it didn't used to do this. Like, am I not on the game? Chunky fucking lag bullshit. Does it have... Probably doesn't have an FPS counter, even though that would be nice. Yeah, that's annoying. None of these Steam games have FPS counters. They're so fucking annoying. And what did I even do that made this the place to go? I'm back. Ah, there you are. Someone's been expecting you. What took you? Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm sure this volume's quiet, but I'll crank it for the rest of the episode. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, it's nice to meet you. 
I'm Sonon Kasakura. I was lucky enough to learn how to fight from him. Yeah. Yuffie's got a waifu? Or a husband new? Like how you've adjusted to life here, indulging in adult pastimes. Which I guess means drinking yourself stupid. No, that means. Let's quit sniffing him. like an over the hill has been. What the hell? Okay, dirty clothes. Happy turtle? If you're putting operation down in one, I take it back. I am there next time you go. Don't worry, I can do adult stuff just fine. Who knew about that? Well, I don't even know where to begin with all that. This guy looks like a pretty cool character. Operation down in one. At any rate, I'm looking forward to working with you, boss. Boss? As in me? Well, I've got a few years on your Ned, but out of us two, we've done this longer. I... I guess I have. Boss, huh? I could get used to that. Beats being stuck on the bottom rung, that's for sure. <laughs> After we get the material, we can celebrate your promotion at the Happy Turtle. Yeah, yeah, yeah! And then strip off some of them clothes. Oh, you got that flyer? The merchandise is good to go. Hand off at a depot and municipal storage. Okay. And who's this little hot girl? You mind coming along? Not at all. Need to scope out the city anyway. Really get to know the enemy. We'll be passing through a rough part of town, so you'll want to go prepared. I'll leave you to get ready. Hit me up outside when you're done, okay? Be right there. Uh, is this guy a guester that you can't switch to? And I wonder if you can equip things. You can equip things. Wow, that's a good one. I don't care about that. I got pretty good like support material. Is that a sword? Like, what kind of weapon is he? I can't see what that is. It kind of looks cool, but I don't know what. And now, watch yourselves, okay? Try and keep a low profile around here, okay? Okay, Bigs and Wedge. And Bigs is alive, but is Jesse alive? And are they in the next game? You guys all it's a cute girl, number 9,000. Okay, Not really. Are kind for me, so stay close. True. So now, where are we headed? To pick up your IDs. There's no way to get topside without them. But I thought TJ was getting our high IDs. What happened with that? High IDs? Yeah, these are different. It takes more than one ID, or even two, to survive in this town. Don't forget, Midgar was built by Shinra for Shinra. Those tyrants! Put the claws on the boss. Those cops. Whoa. What the hell? So, Yuffie, what do you think of the Undercity? Way too crowded. I can't stand it. I don't know, but I'm liking that undercarriage. Okay, stinky. The place can grow on you if you give it a chance. Uh, wait a second. Are you actually saying you like it here? Yeah, we'll stop being mean to these people. Oh, it is a staff. It looks like a sword staff. I thought you hated it. Midgar isn't the enemy. Shinra is. I know W. Thought maybe he had like a Wu Tai katana. We do. Then what was that stuff on the news? About a reactor blowing up and all. No way, that was an accident. It had to be Avalanche. Shh. Sorry. Uh, what's up? Those guys there are from the Splinter Cell. Splinter Cell? They used to be with Avalanche, but left after a policy dispute. Well, look who it is. Yes. Oh, that's what Splinter Cell means. <laughs> After all these years. Where's Cloud? We lost him. You what? He will be okay, though, right? Well, of course he will. 
Little fall ain't gonna stop a hard ass like him. He'll come swaggering back before long, you mark my words. Yeah, I guess he will. Now, can we talk about President shit here? Spouting all that crap about us? That lying son of a bitch! Working for Wu-Tai, Avalanche ain't no more! Oh, yeah. Speaking of sons of bitches, I heard that Walmart's very own Don Corneo has his deuces out looking for you. Huh? Is that so? Uh. Do, 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 do. Don't got time for no low level mobsters. We got Shinra in our sights. Right, Bifa? You and me to the end. We both know this is far from over. Right? Might as well get some rest while we still can. Right. You know what? I think I am gonna look into this. Good luck out there. They're the ones who blew up the reactors. Cool. Should we say hi? No, better not. After what they've done, you gotta assume Shinra's on their tail. Should keep our distance. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. I kind of like this off branch of the story though. It's better than those fucking plot ghosts. <laughs> like if they were if they were, I don't mind that they were in the game. It's the fact that they like took over so many parts that could have been like really epic and nostalgic and they just like weren't. The they couldn't have less less damage. Long as Shinra goes down. So what's wrong with that? Sounds good to me. We're not out to blow Midgar up or tear it down. We want to save it from Shinra. Look around. Why not attack the people living here are innocent bystanders? We can't level their home to take down one company. Well, that company almost leveled our home, and they've got to learn their lesson. Yeah, I get that. Gotta admit, I'm surprised you agreed to work with us. We're just. I knew we were gonna be going over here. To build a brighter future. That's all there is. To it. In other words, you're working with us, so we don't work with your old brother. See if we can play a little bit more here. Uh, can we table this for later, maybe? Not sure now's the best time for heavy topics. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Consider it tabled. So, what exactly does this ultimate materia do? I'm guessing you have plans for it? Like after we steal it? Well, the more materia you have, the stronger you are, right? So once we've got the ultimate materia, we'll be stronger than anyone. I guess you will. <laughs> Damn, Yuffie's crazy. Awesome. And not just that. By sneaking into Shinra HQ and snatching their most Okay, Zack. Not only will we deal I wonder if this guy's an actual character. But we'll prove to them that while Wu Tai might be down, we're not out. That the gist of his boss? Why not? Or, man, or he's, uh, what's that guy's name? I always forget his name. Oh, he's Angeal fused with Zack, fused with Wu Tai Man. Generic Wu Tai Man. See that one? Well, hello there, hot stuff. How'd you like a shot at that big time? With those looks, I guarantee you're golden. So what is this? Ready to be queen of the Undercity? Hey! What am I? Top liver? Kid does good to do this. Get this girl and cover your ears, okay? You'd be living and working in the most luxurious residence in all of the world. You want me to be one of brides, is that it? Which makes you a person of influence, right? Ah, oh, so you know your stuff. But I'd say I'm more of a helping hand. So why don't you help me help you? Let's get going. What are you doing? Get your hands off me. Now don't go playing. Ooh, hit him on the cankle. Hit him on the shinsky. <laughs> no way kids who can do that. No, you don't. Because I'm an adult. <laughs> also, I'm pretty hot stuff myself. Thank you very much. She's gonna finally... 
Sure. Whatever helps you sleep at night. <laughs> I knew that they were gonna put like Yuffie's looks versus that other girl. Like I was almost saying that myself. I don't know what RB is on my team. Uh. Fuck, I don't know what one is RB, man. Okay, I figured it out. What a great person! Oh my god, they did something that did so much damage to me. What the fuck? Ow, ow, ow. Piece of shits. Now what they used on me that melted me. And then this idiot killed himself at full health to make things even more annoying. Hey, the Borderlands 2 guy. Damn. That's me. After careful consideration, we decided to go with a more qualified Let's go! Who are they talking about? Tifa? I wasn't paying attention. Okay. Was that like a Tifa joke and I just missed it all? Because I'm fucking out of it right now. So who were those creeps anyway? The best creeps around, girl. Alright, so we got something here. Wait, what am I reading here? Oh, well, I get more materia, and it's better. Ooh, that's pretty good, though. I didn't know that was there. Fuck. Oh, and there's some interesting items there. Synergizer, that's pretty cool. I guess we're okay with the ninja armlet for now. And then I'll just go over here and put the HP up on that on one of these. Absolutely the parry should not be there. I don't even use it. 
What else do we want to go up fast? It doesn't matter too much. This one's already pretty far along. Probably just do the wind for now. They did a good job making the equipment like very interchangeable and girls back to the Don's mansion. I thought it looked seedy. Guess you'd have to be a scumbag to build a place like that. I can't play with this so quiet anymore. you know what it looks like? I saw it while I was scouting the area. They all love this guy because of his deep ass voice. All right, what's going on here? I'm just going to finish this up, and I'm going to head out, guys. Thanks for tuning in to the commentary. Excited to watch some Maximilian. Excited to meet my girl. Well, we're here. Now we just have to wait. Wait for who? Not sure. We used to have someone who could make fake IDs in house, but they went off with the splinter cell. We've never dealt with this particular vendor before. Hey, uh, what's up with that guy? Mako poisoning. That's what Mako. happens if you don't make the grade as a soldier, or when the military stuns using you. Just another one of Shinra's victims. Them again? Shinra's so gonna get it. If it's Shinra, you got I like that how much can access the plate without They hate Shinra in this game. Hopefully it's like that in the second game too. <laughs> They're gonna scan for those things on the train, so make sure to keep them on you. Thank oh, you. we're doing train shit? Fucking A. Hold up. Is he gonna hurt his tooth? Foreigners and their weak jaws. We should probably head back and wait for Gigi. What the fuck is with these hard, hard to chew nuts? Am I missing something? Oh, is Yuffie gonna be in some new clothes? Things the way they are, we can't just go strolling up to the front gate. Probably not. We're gonna need avalanche to help us buy. No way they're keeping her in this raggedy shit the whole game, right? Back to base, and we'll find our flyer on the way, I'm sure. Hey, dude. Oh, this game's fun, especially when it's not hard. If I wanted to play it hard, I would find a hard difficulty. We're just gonna break this down now, Dark Souls. The hell did I just get? There's probably a weapon for this dude. Oh, there's that one creepy. What does this do? What does that mean? What does reduced cost even mean? Does that just mean two is one and one is one? ATB? That... Oh, I guess we could save here. I do want to play more, but I'm getting a little bit tired and I, I want to relax, so... If I play any longer, I'll probably get sucked in for hours and get to bed too late, and that's just going to be a whole mess. So thanks a bunch again for... T or thanks again. Uh, thanks. Thanks a bunch again, guys, for... Tuning in, guys and girls, girls and guys. Uh, we'll be back. I'm not going to commentate too much more of this playthrough, I don't think. Maybe a little bit more. And I'll be back soon to update you guys on how my life's going. And Yeah, and that's pretty much it.
This is fun. I, I'm already like ready to turn it back on. Hopefully, I can just take a short nap, turn it back on, have some fun, and then get ready for a, a date and cleaning up and stuff.